Hi friends, hey, welcome back to the Expeditionary Johnny channel. Hey, if you're new to my channel, you'll see here that the theme to my channel is to help remove obstacles getting outdoors. That could be things like time, ideas, or maybe equipment. And today we're going to be talking about equipment. I would say most people, when they think about outdoors, they think hiking, camping, fishing, uh, maybe bushcraft, survival type things. I would say in my humble opinion though, I think the most popular outdoor activities happens in our own backyards. So that's today why I want to talk about this solo stove. So I've watched several videos of this solo bonfire stove and it seems like in most cases people like to uh, reference taking that out camping, which you can do. But in my mind, I see this more of a backyard stove. You'll see here the solo bonfire stove. Uh, it does come with this optional fire ring that can be placed underneath your stove to help protect either your grass or your wooden porch. And on the inside of the stove, we have a removable ash pan that rests on the bottom of the stove. And from there, we have a base plate that goes on top of our, our ash pan. So after we've uh, loaded up our stove with lots of fuel, we can add our ring to the top of the stove, which is going to help us get this jet-like action once we have our fire started. This solo stove is basically a bigger, better version of this DIY gas-burning wood stove that I made many years ago. So the way that both of these stoves work is, is they are actually double-walled stoves, all right? So there's an inner layer and an outer layer. So this inner layer is where we're going to put our wood and start our fire. And you're going to notice there's a lot of holes in this, which allows oxygen to flow in through there so our fire can continue to breathe. Now, it goes inside our outer layer, like so. And you'll notice that the outer layer also has a bunch of holes at the bottom of it. Same thing with the solo stove. This allows oxygen to flow in through here into the holes in our inner chamber. Now, because of this design, almost all of the heat is going to go straight up. Now, with most fires, the majority of the heat goes up, but there is some radiant heat that goes out to the side, and we all can feel this when we're standing by a campfire. But on both this and this stove here, almost everybody will go straight up because you're going to be able to stand right next to this thing and feel almost no heat, which is really nice on a summer night when you want to sit around a fire. Now, of all the different uh, review videos that I've watched for the solo stove, I did see one individual struggle with making a fire, so I thought I'd demonstrate on how to make a fire. In that case, the gentleman was trying to make a, a small fire at the, uh, the bottom of the stove and work his way up. Actually, in my opinion, I think the best way to make a fire this is to do from a top to bottom fire, where you think about like wet conditions. You put down a nice thick base, you're gonna put your big logs on the bottom, then you're gonna build up some medium sized twigs and then some really fine twigs at the top. And then as you light your uh, fire at the top, it's going to create ashes and go down there and it's going to, your fire is just going to go stronger and stronger. We're going to have plenty of oxygen here at the top, okay? Alright, to get our fire started today, I'm just going to be using a lighter and a little bit of fat wood. I uh, took a few strips of fat wood with my pocket knife, batoned it down to make, to make these little uh, fat wood matchsticks. Alright, so let's just get her split up. One more for good measure. So I'm going to let this burn for a little bit. Uh, once it grows, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like with the little jet action at the very top. So here's why I think the solo bonfire stove is perfect for families. So I've got this fire on my wooden porch. No, no damage to the porch. I've got my bamboo skewer. I'm gonna add a marshmallow here. And let me just show you how quickly uh, this thing roast up. I don't have to really worry about trying to find the perfect bed of coals here, the perfect spot to roast my marshmallow. There's lots of heat down there. If you can, if you can see my marshmallow, 
it's already blistering up and I am nowhere near the heat I, I am nowhere near the flames it is just blistering up really really quickly here look at that thing no time whatsoever all the heat straight up <laughs> so so you just take a few seconds make sure you rotate it all the way Grab a graham cracker, like so. Grab a couple pieces of chocolate. Grab our top. Voila, s'mores in just a few seconds. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, chef's tip, get the cinnamon sprinkled graham crackers, they're much better. So when you are all done with your burn and your fire is completely out, you simply just take out the base plate and the uh, ash pan from the bottom of your stove, walk it out into your yard and just dump your ashes. Really simple cleanup. All right, folks, so that's it. That is, this is the Solo Bonfire Stove. Now, I'll let you know, uh, Solo does offer a wide range of stoves from small to large. Uh, you can go down to a backpacking size all up to uh, even much larger than this for backyard fires or even camping. Now, I do want to let you know that when you do buy these uh, larger stoves, that uh, it will come with a little tote bag. So if you want to take it camping, or in my case, I'll probably take it up to my in-law's house where we're going to do a little weenie marshmallow roast with my nieces, okay? Oh yeah, before I forget, you can also order a rain cover for your stove to protect your stove from the elements. While it is stainless steel, you still a good idea to uh, cover it up, okay? All right, well, that's it. This brings us to the close of another video. I uh, hope you got something out of this. Maybe it'll give you some ideas on different equipment, different things to do with your family. Uh, with that being said, y'all take care. Have a good week. This little dude is not afraid of the heat at all. Alright, so we're a few minutes into the burn. You can already see the fire is working its way down. It's, it's lighting up some of those medium sized twigs there. And before you know, we're going to have that uh, gas jet uh, reaction coming up here in a little bit. 